Hello again, this is Steve, K8BZ, and in this installment of uh, information on operating HF packet radio, we're going to uh, cover a few housekeeping uh, duties. Uh, these are, in particular, these are more important for HF than they would be for VHF uh, because HF is at a lower baud rate and there's a lot of shared activity and you're dealing with static crashes and propagation changes. Uh, these uh, issues can be more serious on uh, HF than VHF. So these, these will help you uh, have an efficient HF packet station and uh, keep throughput uh, at as high a level as possible for all the users on HF packet. So we're going to be talking about uh, the following uh, using the TNC user manual. If you don't have the user manual for your TNC, uh, go online, do a search, and you can find a, a, a manual for your TNC. It's very important that you have a manual. Uh, you can't guess your way through all of these commands, and uh, the manual can be very overwhelming at first, but uh, uh, if you have a question about how your TNC functions or how a particular command uh, affects the operation of your TNC, you need the manual to sort that out. And we're going to go over how to, how to use the basics of the TNC user manual and the differences uh, between the CAM Plus and the CAM XL. Uh, we're also going to cover setting the TNC clock, which is an important useful function that uh, should be done by all packet operators. And we're going to talk about the pack length command. Uh, that sets the length of the data portion of the packets and uh, what appropriate settings are for HF and VHF. We'll talk about the max frame command. Uh, the max frame command uh, will limit the number of unacknowledged packets that uh, can be transmitted at one time. And that, that's an important setting to uh, have set appropriately for HF. We're going to talk about the max users command. Uh, this will uh, help you understand a little bit about uh, making multiple connections uh, with your TNC where you can be connected to more than one station at the same time. And in ha right in hand with that is the user's command. Uh, there's a, a fair amount of confusion between the user's command and the max user's command. So we'll, we'll try our best to demystify that. The last thing we're going to cover is saving your commands to a file in case you uh, ever accidentally lose them uh, due to a battery failure or accidentally restoring uh, uh, all your commands to the factory default. So first of all we're going to be talking about using the TNC user manual and uh, the, the things we're going to talk about is understanding the full command name and that you don't need to type the full command name if you're checking the, the command settings in your TNC. You can use a short version or abbreviated version of the command name and that can be helpful once you get used uh, to those uh, short versions. Uh, we'll also talk about the format, proper format uh, for the command, uh, what the default settings are and how to find the default settings in the manual and whether the default settings are really appropriate or not for uh, uh, for your uh, particular type of operation that you're doing with your uh, your TNC, particularly on HF. So uh, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the uh, user manuals. Let's let's first take a look at the uh, Let's take a look at a user manual for the for the CAM Plus. And we'll just for start off, we're going to take a look at the user command. Uh, the entire command is shown here. Uh, the user command, entire command name is U-S-E-R-S. -E now you can use the full command name if you are uh, going to check the setting of that command or you can use the abbreviated version or the short version which is just the letters US. Uh, the uh, TNC will understand either one. So we're going to go over to the terminal screen for a minute. I'm going to turn the monitor off. If I just type US it's going to tell us the users are currently set at 3 
for the VHF or for the HF port and three for the uh, VHF. Uh, each port is set at three. Now I can type USERS and it'll understand that as users or just US. You can use the abbreviated version. If you want to change the command, you can use the abbreviated version. We'll change it to 2-2, 2-2. Two two, uh, two two. So you can use the abbreviated version. You get used to using those and it'll save you a lot of, uh, a lot of time and trouble uh, typing out the full command names. But we'll set that back to 3. And we'll also take a look at the difference between how the uh, how the user manual appears for the Cam Plus. The Cam Plus shows shows them a little differently. Uh, this is the I'm sorry. This is the Cam Plus. Cam Plus shows the short version of a command in uppercase letters and the entire command in a combination of upper and lower case. Uh, the N here just specifies that the user command is a number. It's a number in the range from 0 to 26. So you could actually have a up to 26 users at a time uh, connected to your TNC. In the curly brackets, in the CAM Plus manual, it shows what the default setting is. The default setting is one user per port. Now that can be increased uh, if you want, but it, uh, when you buy it new, the default setting for the user command is going to be one user per port. Now let's take a look at the CAM XL and how the CAM XL actually shows it. The CAM XL shows the entire command name in uppercase. It shows the short version underlined. So it shows it a little differently. It shows that the parameter is just n, which represents a number. n is a number in the range from 0 to 26, same as the uh, CAM Plus. And it also shows the default setting where on the uh, CAM Plus user manual, it showed it in curly brackets. Here it, it just uh, spells it out for you. Default is uh, one user per port. Uh, in the CAM XL manual, it also tells you that this is a multi-port command. So you set the parameter for each port. HF first, a slash, and VHF second. Uh, so uh, it's just a little bit different way that uh, the CAM Plus differs uh, from the CAM XL uh, user manual. The, uh, we covered the format for the commands and the default settings, so that, that gives you an idea of how, uh, uh, how to use the user manual. If you have a question about a command, make sure you have the user manual and uh, you can take a look at it and it will give you even more information about all the commands. Next we're going to uh, discuss setting the TNC clock. Uh, the CAM Plus and the CAM XL both come with an internal clock uh, where you can set the date and time in the clock. Uh, it's your preference as to whether you want to set Zulu time or local time. Uh, um, HF users that are strictly HF probably want their clock set to Zulu time. Uh, I keep my clock set to local time because I use a lot of uh, programs that, uh, uh, that automatically send messages here on VHF. So I keep my clock set to local time. But you should set your TNC clock, and we'll, we'll describe why when we get into uh, the actual uh, description of how to set it. The command that sets the time in a CAM Plus, uh, the command in both is the full command name is daytime, D-A-Y-T-I-M-E. The short version of that in the CAM Plus is D-A. For the CAM XL, the short version is different. It's D-A-Y-T. The format for setting the date and time in both the CAM Plus and the, the uh, CAM XL is to put in the two-digit year, two-digit month, two-digit day, two-digit hour, two-digit minute, and optionally you can include two-digit seconds. If you, you can omit seconds, you don't need to put seconds in, but uh, you can put it in if you want. And uh, if you don't, it just starts the seconds at zero uh, when you enter the day. So we're going to go over to the terminal, and we'll just show you quickly. 
uh, in for the CAM plus again the short version of the daytime command is just DA so if I enter that it's going to tell me what the current setting is uh, it's 1012 of 17 at 14 15 and 26 seconds uh, local time uh, if you enter a question mark in the command name, it's going to give you information about the command. It may give you the format or just give you a brief description. For the daytime command, it's very helpful because it tells you what to enter. So if you want to change the date, let's say we want to change this to September 6 of 1953, we can do that. Enter the daytime, uh, the DA command for the daytime command, and then the year is going to be 53. Uh, the month September, the day is 06, and we'll just pick a time. Let's just make it uh, 1252. Now, when I push enter, that's going to set that date and time in my TNC clock. So we're going to type the DA command, and it'll show you the day is uh, the date and time is now set to September 6, 1953, at 12:52 p.m. So we're going to set it back to the correct day and time. Yeah, it actually is. 2017, October 12 at 1416. I didn't bother to put in seconds, but we could. Uh, you'll notice when I checked the date and time, we're back to October 12, 2017. And when I set it, it set the seconds at zero and three seconds elapsed in between when I set the clock and when I actually checked the time. Uh, so that, that shows you how to set the time in your clock. So let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. The next command we're going to talk about is setting the display options. That's done with the day string command. And sometimes with new packet operators, this can be a little confusing. The short version of day string in the CAM plus is DAYS. The short version in the CAM XL is DA. So make sure you are if you're using short versions, make sure you use the version appropriate for your TNC. Uh, if you have some other TNC, you might want to check the manual. Uh, you can always do a question mark DA and see what that's describing. Is it the day string command or is it the day time command? Because the day string command in the CAM XL is the same, the short version of the day string command in the CAM XL is the same as the short version of the day time command in the CAM plus. So you don't want to you don't want to get these short versions mixed up. Uh, Maybe a little confusing for me to try to show the differences between the CAM plus and the XL, but if I just described a two port Cantronics TNC, some people are going to have the plus, some are going to have the XL. Realize there are some minor differences in the commands. The day string command sets the date and time display options. Now we're going to go back to the terminal uh, program here. You'll notice when I type DA, it, it displays the date and time as uh, month, day, year with, with slashes. Uh, we're going to look at the day string command, D-A-Y-S. My day string command, you don't put numbers in the, in the parameters for the day string command. You put M's for month, D's for day, Y for year, and, and as you can see, H for hours, M for minutes, S for seconds, for how you want the date and time displayed. Now, this is the format that works for me with other programs that I use. If I change the format of the date and time for me, in other programs, it will cause uh, an error, and the program will have an error code returned to me. So I, I keep my date and time in this format. You may not want to. I'm going to do a monitor herd command and we'll look and see how the date and time is displayed. Now we're going to change the day string command and there's lots of good options for how you can have the date and time displayed. Uh, D-A-Y-S, well, let's spell it right, D-A-Y-S. Now we're going, to, we're going to change that. Again, you don't put numbers in the day string command. You just put M's, D's, or Y's for days, months, and years. H and M for hours and minutes for how you want it displayed. So let's just say I want it displayed day, month abbreviated, uh, a three letter abbreviation for the month, and then I want the century 20, so it's going to put 20, and then just the two digit for the century here, and then I'm going to have hours, 
colon minute. And I'm going to leave seconds out altogether and I'm going to indicate what time zone this is. EDT, Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, now let's, let's display the date and time now. 12 October 2017, 1419 Eastern Daylight Time. I didn't change the time at all. All I did was change the day string command that shows how the time is displayed. Now, uh, let's compare the monitor herd list now after I change the way the time is displayed. So I'm going to do another monitor herd. And you see how the time is displayed. You have lots of options for how you might want to do this. D-A-Y-S-T-R. Let's do day, month, 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 20, year, year, 1918 UTC. Okay. Uh, whoops. I shouldn't have put, my, let me do that over, I, it, it's easy to get confused. Uh, D-A-Y-S-T-R, day, day, month, 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 20, year, year, hour, hour, minute, minute, U-T-C. And we'll just, we'll just do it that way. Now we'll do a display, a monitor herd command. If, you're, if you want to indicate uh, whether you're showing a local time or UTC, Zulu time, GMT, however you want to do it, you can put that information in there. But we're going to change day string back the way I use it. D-A-Y-S-T-R. That's going to be month, month, day, day, year, year, hour, minute, second. So we're back to normal. Uh, 10, 12 of 17 at 14, 20. So that lets you set options. Now you do want to have your, I'm going to go back, uh, go back to this for just a minute. Uh, your monitor herd command will give you correct information. Even more important, uh, let's connect to my mailbox, ckbz-1. Try that again. Let's connect to the mailbox. I'll list the messages. The date and time displayed on these messages is taken from your TNC clock. If you don't have the clock set correctly, you're going to have uh, weird dates and times uh, displayed when you look at your message list. Uh, those can come in handy for other users sometimes, uh, even, uh, even your uh, node herd list. Stand by. Node herd list. Uh, it will uh, display the date and time correctly. Other users connected to you might find that information helpful. If they're trying to connect to a node, it's nice to know how long it's been since that last node was heard. And if it wasn't heard for several days, they might want not want to try to make a connection to that. So it's it's very helpful to keep your clock set to uh, to a time that uh, is actually going to be going to be useful for yourself and users of your uh, packet station. Now that you have the clock set in your TNC, uh, we're going to talk about another command. Uh, you may notice over time that your TNC clock uh, gains time or loses time. Uh, it's your TNC is not a precision timepiece, but uh, it does keep time, and it may, pr and probably doesn't keep accurate time. It may increase or decrease over time. So there's a command in the TNC called the day tweak command. The day tweak command, the short, the full version is uh, D A Y T W E A K. The short version of the day tweak command is the same for the CAM XL and the CAM Plus. It's D-A-Y-T-W. The parameter for that is just a number in the range from 0 to 15. The default setting is 8 for both the CAM Plus and the CAM XL. Adjusting that number up or down from 8 can increase or decrease the clock speed to help you tweak the clock so it uh, keeps good time. The range and default of the parameter for day tweak is the same for the CAM Plus and XL. It's 0 to 15 with a default of 8. If you increase the clock, uh, the day tweak number, uh, it slows the clock speed. 
If you decrease the day tweak number, it increases the clock speed. Now the only difference between the CAM Plus and the CAM XL is how much it increases or decreases with each change in the day tweak number. For the CAM Plus, uh, it will change the clock speed 0.85 seconds per day uh, for each incremental change in the day tweak number. Uh, for the CAM XL, it'll change it 0.4 seconds per day for, the, uh, for each incremental change in the day tweak number. So if you set your clock uh, and look at it over a few days, if you're gaining or losing a little time, adjust the day tweak a little bit and uh, you will find that it will keep pretty accurate time. You do need to once in a while take a look at your clock though and just reset it. Now I, I use a program called Outpost Packet Message Manager and that does some automatic message creation and, and forwarding, connects to bulletin boards automatically. Every time that connects to the bulletin board, it resets my TNC clock automatically to my computer system clock. And my computer system clock is, is synced with an online uh, time sync program, uh, with an online time sync program called Dimension 4. But if you, don't, if you don't do something like that, you do want to check your clock every now and then, reset it if it gets off, and maybe play with the day tweak uh, command a little bit to, uh, to adjust that. And it will, you'll find that you don't have to set your clock all that often if you uh, adjust that day tweak command. It'll, it'll keep pretty accurate time. Now that we have your clock running, uh, as accurately as we can. We're going to talk about uh, a command that is uh, very important on HF packet. It's the pack length command. Uh, the pack length command specifies the length of a the data portion of a packet. Uh, on VHF you're usually not dealing with uh, uh, QSB or signal fading, you're not dealing with static crashes because it's usually in an FM mode. Uh, you're not dealing with uh, changes in propagation. Uh, on HF, all of that are things, things that you have to deal with. In addition, uh, you're only 25% of the speed on HF that you are on VHF. You're at 300 baud on HF and you're probably 1200 baud on VHF. So the longer the packet, on HF, the longer it takes to transmit that packet and the more likelihood that the signal is going to fade, there's going to be a static crash or there's going to be a packet collision, which is the packet version of QRM that's going to uh, destroy the packet to where it, the receiving station can't acknowledge the packet. So the, it helps to keep the length of the packet reduced on HF. So we'll take a look at uh, these commands. Let me back up. Uh, the CAM plus short version of the pack length command is just the letter P. Uh, so the pack length command is just a number that's in the range from 0 to 255. Yeah, the CAM plus is a dual port TNC, so that pack length uh, parameter can be set for each port. Again, the, uh, uh, the HF port always comes before the slash and the VHF port after the slash. The default setting for pack length in the CAM Plus is 64 characters for HF and 128 characters for VHF. Uh, and obviously the longer you can set that parameter, uh, the more information you can transmit in one packet, but it doesn't help you at all if that packet can't be acknowledged because it was interfered with uh, during transmission. Uh, particularly important on HF, so uh, 64 for a pack length on HF is, is pretty appropriate. Uh, the 128 on VHF, you might be able to increase that depending on the volume of traffic uh, and the distances and, uh, and conditions, propagation conditions on VHF, but 128 is still pretty reasonable. So the default setting on a CAM Plus is, is pretty good. Uh, it, but you want to check it, especially if you bought a used TNC, you want to go in and see what that is. You don't know what the previous user set those, uh, uh, set those parameters to. So uh, you want to take a look. You don't want to have 128 or greater for a pack length on HF. 
Now we were talking here about the CAM Plus short version and the default settings. Let's take a look at the CAM XL. The CAM XL, the short version of the pack length command is different. It's not just the letter P, it's P-A-C-L. Uh, the uh, parameter is the same, it's just a number in the range from 0 to 255. Now in the CAM Plus manual that I downloaded from the internet, uh, there was no indication there that this was a dual port command. Uh, now I am using a CAM Plus, not a CAM XL, so I cannot verify that. I'm a little suspicious that that might be an error in the manual. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that they would have one setting for pack length for both the HF and VHF ports. So if you're using a CAM XL, let's go over to the terminal program. If you're using a CAM XL, do a PACL and see if you get one number for HF and then a slash and then another number for VHF. You want the HF setting to be around 60. 60, 64 possibly, somewhere in that range. If in your CAM XL it only shows one number, then you need to make sure that you're not using an appropriate pack length for VHF when you're running HF. You may have to go in and change that manually, which uh, I would be very surprised if that was the case. I'm more, I'm more inclined to think that uh, that, that was a um, mistype in the uh, CAM XL manual. Well, we'll take a quick look here, and I'll, I'll just uh, show you what I'm talking about, talking about uh, in the pack length command. I just have to scroll down to it. There we are. pack length. It just shows that the short version is PACL. It's a parameter as a number in the range from 0 to 255 and it says the default is 128. Now a default of 128 for a pack length on HF is too high. You need to reduce that. If you are way up on, for example, if you're up on 10 meters and you have a private place where your local group uh, runs packet for maybe uh, ARES operation or something like that. Now that could be increased possibly, but on the uh, commonly used packet frequency on 20 meters where you have users from all over the country on there during all hours of the daylight uh, time, uh, that pack length would be too high. Now you'll notice on other, uh, other parameters here for, uh, I'll try to find one, here's one. Uh, net users, this specifically says it's multi-port and in the default it says it gives you both settings for HF and VHF. So just a word to the wise for uh, CAM XL users, check your pack length command, be aware of what it is when you're running HF. Not quite as critical on VHF, but definitely be aware of it on HF. Okay, we've got your the length of your packets on HF sent to a reasonable, uh, a reasonable number. Now we're going to talk about the max frame command. The max frame command determines how many unacknowledged packets can be sent uh, before your TNC will stop sending additional packets and wait for acknowledgments from the receiving station. So we'll take a look at what these settings are for, the, for our two TNCs in question. Uh, for the CAM Plus, uh, the short version of the max frame command is just max, M-A-X. It's a number from 1 to 7. It's a dual port command and the default setting is 1 frame on HF and 4 frames on VHF. And again, this is very appropriate uh, for both the HF and VHF ports. For the same reasons you don't want an excessive packet length, you don't want five packets at a time being sent on HF before you get acknowledgments. One packet at a time of a length, a data length of about 60 to 64 characters is the best way to go on a shared use uh, packet frequency on HF. Uh, your TNC, if, uh, for example in this case on VHF where the max frame is four, your TNC will actually send four individual packets of whatever length your pack length is 
on the same transmission. Uh, you don't want to be doing that on, uh, on HF. Keep that number low. One, one is a good way to go. And if the channel is clear, they're going to go through very quickly. If the channel is not clear, uh, then the shared use of that channel will be much more efficient for all of the users uh, on HF. Now, let's look at the CAM XL. The CAM XL has a different short version of that command. It's max F instead of just max. The parameter is still a number from 1 to 7, but the default setting is 4 on HF and 4 on VHF. For the CAM XL, again on HF, 1 is a better choice. Uh, again, if you're up on 10 meters or say you're up on 6 meters, for example, uh, you may be using sideband on 6 meters. It doesn't happen very often, but I'm not saying it couldn't. Uh, you could be uh, using sideband for packet on 6 meters and it's just local use people. Maybe you can increase the max frame for your specific use. But down on 20 meters and 40 meters where there's a lot of QSB, QRM, QRN, you want to keep the max frames to a low number. One is a good number. If you've got a good frequency, the packets will sail through. If you have a busy frequency with a lot of QRM and QSB, it will be more efficient for all of the shared users of that uh, frequency. So uh, CAM XL users, again, uh, check your settings. Uh, and all users should, especially if you bought your TNC used. Check your settings on max frame and see, uh, see how they're set. Now we're going to discuss two commands. Uh, I'm going to tell you what both commands are and then we'll discuss them one at a time. The two commands are max users and users. This can be very confusing uh, at first. Uh, as you may have noticed in, uh, in one of the previous videos, if you view the other videos in this series, you can connect to more than one packet station at a time. Uh, each of the connections occur on what's known as a stream on packet radio. Uh, I discussed stream switches in a previous video. The number of streams available to use is set by the max user command. The max user command will tell you how many streams you can use and if you have the max user limited to a certain number once you've once you've made connections on all of those available streams you won't be able to make any additional connections unless you disconnect. So let's take a look at the max user command. The max users command and it's actually users uh, the max users command is a number from 0 to 26 and the default setting is 10 users on each port. 10 users on uh, 10 max users on HF, 10 max users on VHF. Uh, and This is the same for the CAM Plus and the CAM XL. Uh, for anything other than very specific purposes on exclusive frequencies where the average packet user would never be there, those numbers are way too high. Uh, the max user sets the number of streams available for your use. Uh, unless you think you're going to be connected to 10 people at the same time, uh, that number is probably much higher than it needs to be. Now it's not, it's not necessarily a problem if you have it set that high because you won't be making that number of connections yourself but you might want to think about limiting that number to a reasonable number of what you think you really want to use. Uh, I only have three set in mind. Max users set to three. Uh, and once in a while I'm connected to two stations at the same time but I, I don't know that I've been connected to three stations at the same time in quite a long while. Quite a number of years. Uh, but uh, uh, you can if you keep the num that uh, max user parameter set to a higher number. Uh, max users uh, two per port or three per port is probably pretty appropriate for new operators and uh, you probably want to consider uh, dropping that down to to a reasonable number. Now there's a lot of confusion that comes in between in for the two commands max users and users and we'll see if we can clear that up and uh, hopefully make that more understandable. The limit on the number of connect requests coming to your station is set by the user's command. 
the, the max users command tells you how many streams you can use. Some of those streams may be used by people connecting to you. Okay, the short version for the CAM Plus and the CAM XL is US for the user command. Again, it's a number from 0 to 26. The default setting on both the CAM Plus and the CAM XL is 1 slash 1. Now, at first thought, you might think, wait a minute, how, why is that? Uh, if I set users at 1, 1 stream on HF, and max users at five, they seem to contradict each other. Well, uh, here's, here's what that means. Let's just talk about one part. We'll talk about the HF part. If you have the user's command set to one, that means one person at a time and only one person at a time can connect to you from another station. If your max users command is set to three, that means that you have two more streams that you can use to connect to other stations when there's already one person connected to you. So this is for incoming connections to your TNC only. Uh, for the user's command, uh, it sets a limit on incoming connect requests only. Once that limit is reached, you still have however many streams are left that are set by the max user's command to use for your use for you to make your own connections to other packet stations. Even if all of your incoming streams are used up uh, by the number set by the user's command. The user's command cannot be greater than max users. It can be equal to max users, but it can't be greater than max users. If you have your users and max users commands both set to two, and two people connect to you at the same time, you don't have any streams left that you can use to connect to anyone else while they're connected to you. So the user's command should be lower than max users. So it will allow you the ability to connect to someone while someone else has made a connection to you. Uh, for beginners, you might want to consider the user's command set at one on each port and max users may be set at three on each port. So if one person is connected to you, you still have two streams left that you can use to connect to other people. So hopefully that will clear up uh, some of the confusion. Uh, uh, now again, it, ma the max users command, if you want, you could leave that set at 10, but set the users command to a lower reasonable number. Uh, on HF, it, you may find at times where three or four people may be wanting to connect to you at the same time. They don't know that other people are trying to connect or may already be connected to you. And if you get three people all connected to you at the same time, there's going to be far more activity than, uh, than can be managed manually uh, in packets. So keep, keep your users command down to one or two maybe. Uh, your max users can be higher to leave additional ports for you, but don't, don't leave your max users at 10 and your users at 10. Uh, that could lead to a lot of congestion on the packet frequency if, if all those streams uh, get used up. Well, we've covered a lot of information here and uh, talked about a lot of commands. Uh, hopefully it's helped you have a, a better understanding of how to use uh, proper settings in these commands, particularly on HF. Uh, but the, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, what to do with all of these commands uh, if you happen to lose them, uh, lose them in your TNC. How can you get them restored? Uh, let's go over to the terminal program here and we'll, we'll demonstrate what we're talking about here. I'm going to turn the monitor off here for a minute. Uh, if I type display, it's going to show all of the command settings in this TNC and what their current settings are. Now there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of commands there and it you may spend a lot of time going through getting all of these set where you want them and uh, lo and behold you may have the uh, memory internal memory battery in your TNC might fail and you'll lose all these settings or what happens even more often than that there's a setting called reset. And if you type reset, it'll do a software reset. Basically it just restarts your TNC. Uh, you may get that confused with uh, restore. Now I'm not going to type restore. 
Restore resets all the factory defaults in your TNC. So all of your identification uh, commands, all of your beacon commands, uh, your max frames, max users, you name it, everything is back to factory defaults. So sometimes people mistakenly use the restore command when they meant to reset the TNC. And if you do that, your commands are gone. And that can be very frustrating if you had some help setting up the commands and wasn't really clear on what they were. The best thing to do, I'm going to clear the screen. Once you have the commands set where you want them, do a display. Now, and it filled the entire screen. I'm going to do a control A which selects it all, then I'm going to do a control C that copies it all, and then I'm going to open up Notepad, and I'm going to do a control V that pastes it, and then I can save this file. And that has all of my command settings. Now most of those commands you will never change. They're just set at the default settings and they will not ever change, but at least you have all of the commands set uh, to settings that you're satisfied with. So save that file to a safe location. I'm back to the terminal screen now. Now there's there's something else I want to uh, to let you know. This this is a file that I have saved in Notepad that has all of my important commands that need to be set. Once in a while, you'll see here pack length is set. Uh, users are set. If I scroll down to that section. Uh, you'll find, oh, let me do this, I can do a, no, that, that doesn't work in uh, Notepad, sorry about that. But uh, they're, they're all in here, but not every command in my TNC is in here, but the ones that could change, all my identification commands. Now there are certain commands, and I have them listed first. The following commands must be entered by hand, and I'll show you why. Max user, let's use max users or num nodes. We'll use max users because that's a command we already talked about. Uh, max u uh, let's get over here where it's going to work. Max users is set at four, uh, four in each port. Let's change it to three. When I do that, it's going to cause there are certain commands that will cause a software reset in your TNC. Max users three dash three. There. Uh, it causes the restart message to come up on your TNC. Uh, now you can't have those in the middle of your command list uh, if you're going to copy and paste. Now let me explain what I mean by that. Let me get my notepad file back over here. All of these commands, none of these commands cause a software reset. So I'm just going to drag the mouse over these commands and copy all of them. Okay, and this is where it stops. Now down, down here below that is where I have other things. I have some uh, packet messages that I can restore in my bulletin board that I've saved in this same file. But I'm going to do, uh, just do a right click and copy. Okay, now I've copied all those commands. Let me go over here to the command prompt and I'm just going to do a control V, the shortcut for paste, and I'm going to paste all those commands. So if my TNC accidentally was restored to the factory default, this is going through and restoring all those back back to where they need to be. And that's all I needed to do because I've saved all of these in uh, uh, in a notepad file. Now let's, uh, the reason you can't have these in there, max users and num nodes, is they cause a software reset. So your TNC would reset in the middle of this paste operation and it wouldn't get those. So go through and find the ones in your manual that cause a software reset and they'll be described in the manual. There's only a few. And put those at the front of your file with a little note that says set these manually by hand. Uh, now I'll do this again. If I set that at 4-2 uh, 
causes a software reset, and while it's doing that, it's going to miss some of the commands that followed it when you pasted them all from a, from a single file. I'll change it back to 4, get another software reset, so we're good to go. So you want to save Save your command file to Notepad, and get the uh, uh, get the commands that that create a software reset up at the front of the file with a note saying "Enter these by hand." Then everything after that you can copy and paste. Copy it and paste it at the command prompt for all the rest of those. And then if you ever lose your commands, all you have to do is paste them back in at the command prompt and you're good to go. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I tried to keep it short but it's very difficult to do and do a thorough explanation and description uh, uh, for new uh, packet operators. So. Uh, hopefully you'll find this helpful. If you have any questions, uh, having trouble with anything, uh, please feel free to email me. I'm more than happy to do what I can to help you out. And, uh, and if you get on the air on packet, there are lots of operators that, uh, that are there that can give you a hand also. So my email address, uh, you can find at my QRZ website. Uh, just run my call at qrz.com or it's easy to remember, k8bz at awrl.net. Thanks for watching and enjoy packet.